Welcome to Municipal Affairs. I'm Christopher Brown. Now, in today's episode, we're focusing on one of the most significant gatherings for municipal leaders in the province of Manitoba, the AMM Fall Convention. Every November, over 800 delegates from across the province come together for this annual general meeting of the Association of Manitoba Municipalities. This year, from November 25th to 27th, the convention will host elections for the AMM's executive committee, including the position of president and two vice presidents, each serving a two-year term. Now, one of the candidates running for president of the Manitoba Association is Kathy Valentino, deputy mayor of the city of Thompson and currently interim president of the association. Now, we had the opportunity to sit down and speak with Kathy about her candidacy, her vision for the role, and what she hopes to bring to Manitoba's municipalities once elected. Yeah. Kathy, thank you so much for sitting down with me and talking about your candidacy for AMM president. I know you are currently, after Camp Light stepped down, the interim president, but you're running for a full two-year term at this upcoming November's AMM convention in Winnipeg. What made you decide to put your hat name in the ring? It was an easy decision for me. First off, I am not... Um, happy about President Blight having to step down. Obviously, we we wish him all the best, but his leadership I certainly respected. And as vice president for him the last two years, I certainly learned a lot. It also made me realize what a passion and how important AMM is for Mantle municipalities. So it was it was a no brainer for me to say yes. I I want to do this and I want to be the president and continue on with the direction that the association is going. And obviously I was very thankful and grateful that the board of directors uh, offered or suggested or that I would be the interim on his uh, stepping down. So very grateful for that. You, you'll be taking over and you have taken over uh, at a time when municipalities are struggling, not only in Manitoba, but from across the nation. I was at the spring convention of AMM in Brandon earlier this year, and I spoke to some of the members there, and I've spoken to mem- many members on our show. And there's a cross section of a lot of issues that are the individual municipalities are dealing with. How does your background give you the ability to address the so unique challenges that stem from municipal governance and municipal city councils and town councils from across the province? First and foremost, I think because I'm in the city of Thompson, which is very north and seven and a half hours north of Winnipeg. And even though I'm a city, uh, I am remote and I'm rural and I'm far away. And I think that you learn how to have a stronger voice when you're rural and remote and you feel forgotten a lot of times. So you really start to uh, learn the importance of advocating for your needs, but not only just for a small town or a remote area, but you start to see like how important your region is and how you fit in with the rest of the the province. And I think what's what's interesting is in my role as vice president, we we try and tour all municipalities in a four-year cycle. So we did 35 one year and 33 a, a second year. And what I find so unique right now in the province of Manitoba is the priorities for municipalities are the same. Everybody is speaking the same concerns, public safety, homelessness, health care, uh, funding. Like it's the, the same issues. No doubt about it. There is the one offs, right? Like you have the, the floods, uh, things like that. There are the one offs, but the, the landscape is typically the same with what municipalities are dealing with. And I think that's a really unique time in our province in the last few years that everybody is kind of on the same page with a lot of the same priorities or challenges. I don't even know if they're priorities. This this position will take you to Winnipeg a lot, dealing with the canoe government, the Manitoba government. And over the last, I would say, probably about five months, it seems like this government is trying to work with municipalities, but there are some hiccups as well. I talk about the 2050 plan that uh, has been sort of changed over the last few weeks. And then also just recently with Winnipeg, the increasing of municipal zoning changes that is going to be going on there. How do you see yourself being able to work with the current administration to advance municipal issues? And then the and yes, there will be a flip question to this one here in two seconds. Absolutely. Uh, so I think we already have been 
because this is a government that's been in power now for one year. So my role as vice president, we already had a lot of that getting to know and build relationships and getting them to understand the priorities of our Manitoba municipalities. So, so I think that will just continue on moving forward with them. So there has been a lot of relationship building and a lot, yeah, absolutely. A lot of trips to Winnipeg, a lot of trips throughout the province. I couldn't do this without the support of my administration here in Thompson, my mayor and council, working with the AMM st staff, working with being creative on travel and schedule and meetings. There was always that little bit of doubt two years ago when I was running for vice president is how could somebody from the North do this? Well, you know what? We did it and I did it and I can make the commitment and it works and it doesn't matter that I live in the North. So absolutely. It'll be good. Will you be able to call out the provincial government if it's doing something wrong? Can you call a spade a spade in some sense? Because uh, not everything is going to line up with municipalities in the province. And we talk about the 2050 plan. I know Selkirk Mayor uh, uh, Johansson is very not on board with it. And that's where the sort of the changes came from. So will you be able to stand up and say, no, this does not work for my members as potentially the next president? Absolutely. So I think that maybe calling out is maybe not the, pr the proper language that I would be using because we have to understand also taking a step back that we represent all municipalities and we work through the resolutions that come from our members at our convention. And then if those resolutions get passed, then the board and the executive will advocate with the right municipal departments on what those resolutions are that we need to be working on. If it's definitely something that we are we are strong against or even for both ways, we have the kind of relationship with, with the government that we are always um, able to quote, whether it be in media or engaged in their departments. It's one of the things that as an executive and as a board, we, we always say to government is, Please let us be at the table. Let us continue to be at the table. We are the government closest to the people. So use us. Use the information we have and what we're hearing to help you. So, so ultimately, that's kind of the path that I choose to go. If we have to speak up on something that we disagree with, I mean, absolutely, we, we do that. I don't know if we... I, 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 don't, I don't like calling out, but I, I think that you have those debates and yeah. those dialogues with them to try and um, collaborate. You'll have the tough them. decisions. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, will you be able to have the tough decisions with your member member municipalities as well? Because you're their voice. You're going to be their voice in Winnipeg. Will you be able to have those tough decisions say, we just couldn't get it this time. So hopefully in a year's time, we'll be able to get it. Or how do you see yourself in your role as potential, the next president working with all 137, if I'm getting that correct here, 137 municipalities across the province. I think that there's a sense of, you got to be realistic. Yeah. And you have to have a common sense approach also. And I'm a relationship builder kind of person. So if you have good relationships and honest conversations, then it's okay to say if, if you've even done something wrong or yeah. it's not how we want. It's okay to say that, but it's also good to say, how can we? How can we be creative to, to get the message we want to the government so that they can work with us to come to some kind of comparable situation or solution to, to what we're trying to get. I want to turn to the organization as a whole now, because not only you will there be advocacy work, but there will be also internal work as well. We'll be working along Senate, uh, Dennis Volkoff, the uh, executive director for the organization. Where do you see the organization heading in the next year or the next two years if you are the successful candidate? First off, the this association has an amazing small staff. When I look at other associations across the province, I have to give them a shout out. They are absolutely so professional and amazing and supportive in our roles from president to board of directors to each other. Good work. They're, they are absolutely amazing. I think coming out of the, the leadership of President Blight, which took the association out of, I know we don't want to keep saying the pandemic, but took us through that, out of it, 
to a new provincial government, I see us just getting momentum with this new government. I don't even know if we, if, when you stop seeing new government, but I think we're at that point where we're, we're getting momentum on getting them to have us engaged and at the table more often. I, I also am proud to say that we had some of our most successful advocacy in the last couple of years as an AMM board and executive. So I think we need to keep continue building on that. And I, I'm excited for it. I think we have momentum. I think our, our association is very well respected throughout our province. Honestly, just in the things going out for me being the interim president, I was completely overwhelmed with messages from associations and people across the province over the weekend. We have a lot of respect. Do we have a lot of work to do? Absolutely. So we can't take our foot off the gas pedal. We have to keep moving and keep the momentum moving forward as an association with this government. So what's priority number one for a Valentino uh, presidency then? <laughs> Well, I kind of like a, a theme around things, and I feel a little bit that we need to take a step back and get a little bit back to the basics, I, especially with, with government and new government and them learning about us. I think that sometimes it gets a little clouded and we're quickly trying to band-aid things with previous administrations and things. So I would like us just to take a little bit of a key back to basics approach I mean, obviously, there's like the four fundamentals that we continue to talk about, the public safety, the infrastructure issues, just our funding model, the DFA stuff, connectivity. So those basic needs for municipalities to grow and build vibrant communities is what we need to get back to. Okay, I usually ask this question, but you kind of answered in that question, but I have to ask it. How will your presidency be different than Cam Blight's presidency? How is you? How is Kathy Valentino not just going to be another term for Cam Blight? That is a great question. I really like that. Well, I think everybody is different. The world would be boring if we were all the same. So I, I do believe that my leadership approach is a little bit maybe softer. And sometimes that's not good. I need to have a little bit more of a, a firmer hand approach. So I do believe it's, it's a little bit of a softer approach with me. A little bit maybe more of a, we need to build relationships to get to solutions kind of approach. Uh, that's kind of how I, I see it. I like to include the board of directors and the executive to have a team approach to when we are advocating with those unique issues within municipalities that are maybe different than everybody else's, we have to rely on the expertise or those municipalities that are dealing with that to help myself as a president, to help our association know how we can, how we can meet them or how we can help them, I think the best way for a solution. You, I don't know if that's a good answer, but yeah. I like working with Cam, so that's a tough one for me to it, answer. But it's, it's a question I ask all the candidates who come on this show, right? Because I'm speaking to the RMA right now, and they're going through a change as well. And yeah. they say it's the hardest question they have to answer because you have to put your own stamp on the organization, do you not? Absolutely, absolutely. And and I know that there's an element of, um, oh, Kathy would be the first female president ever. That's not who I am. Like, I think it's the Association of Manitoba Municipalities. Who is that leader? And how is their leadership style to get us with results with the government? I want to talk about yourself for a second. We, we talked about it a little bit before, but you would be taking over the presidency at a very uh, busy time for you yourself. You're currently the deputy mayor of the city of Thompson as of recording this interview. You're currently the third vice president of the Federation of Canadian Municipalities as of recording this interview. You're currently the interim president of the Association of Manitoba Municipalities as of recording this interview. You're a mom, you're a home, you have your own community to deal with as well. Do you have time to do this? I'm so happy you're asking me that because that's something that I really want to address to Manitoba municipalities. So first and foremost, 
as a my community, my my mayor and council definitely support me, and I couldn't do this with without them. So yeah, at the time of recording, I'm deputy mayor, but that will change also through the leadership of Mayor Smook. So and the help of my administration to work with AMM administration, that is you couldn't do it without that. I I, I do believe my role as vice president of AMM clearly already shows my commitment to doing an executive position, president or vice president. The support of the board for me to be the interim president shows that there is support that I can make the commitment to do this. What's interesting with the FCM role as third vice president is as a president of a provincial or territorial association, you automatically join the FCM board. Uh, I think that there is an element of people don't even know that really, quite honestly. So the president of AMM or any other province or territory will be on the board of directors for FCM already. Then they will be assigned to FCM committees also just because they are the president. So I'm already there as the FCM board exec table officer. So in my perfect little world, man, it would be great if we could have another voice from AMM to, to fill in some of the president roles, and then we would have two Manitoba voices from AMM at the FCM level. I don't even know if that's a discussion point because that would be something if I am elected to be the president that we could, we could talk to. So I think there's some good creative opportunities there by me being the president of AMM and already having a seat at the FCM table. So, because a lot of it is duplicated anyways. And from the local perspective, do your residents support your decision to run for this position as well? Because while you're going to be advocating and asking the municipal elected leaders to vote, the people of Thompson expect that when you get elected to their role, you're going to advocate for just them. So uh, have the residents of your community, after you announce that you're running, come out and said, yes, we support your decision to do this, Kathy. I think through social media, with the FCM election in June, and then this coming up now for the president election for AMM, I've had probably more people say to me, can I vote for this? And what what is it you're running for now? <laughs> I, I saying, saw that on social media last night. <laughs> so, so I think as long as you have a presence in your community, that they should support you because you are ultimately still representing your town or your municipality at that table also. That's how you ultimately end up being identified as also. So I, I think that there is a level of support and excitement that that we can have this kind of representation from such a rural remote area is, is good and exciting. It certainly is rural. I barely and, didn't even get to the paw before I had to turn around because I did not expect it to be that long of a drive from the paw to Thompson. I was like, yeah, this can be a summer drive for me. That's just my own personal. Well, that was going to be one of my questions to you is how come we didn't see you? But that's OK. <laughs> because I got to the paw and this will be a conversation off the wreck. <laughs> OK, very good. And I also um, just. I just want to add one more thing to to being the time commitment to do that, that I, I don't have a commitment at home. I don't have it like I'm a grandma now. So that's exciting. So that's more of my commitment if I'm going to be a grandma. But I don't have like a household commitment by no means to that I have to work around, which I'm, I guess, grateful for at this time in my life. So, yeah. So final question before I let you go here, because you are sure. a busy person. Why should people put their trust in you to be the next AMM president heading into two years? Of who knows what's going to happen? People need to put their trust into me because they have to be able to see my passion for this. They have to be able to believe in me that I believe in municipalities and I believe as leaders that we are the ones that build better communities. And if we want our communities to be vibrant, we have to get government to fund municipalities better so we can provide the core quality of life for our municipalities that we can provide recreation and public safety and, and you know, 
relationships with our seniors and we want people to come to our communities and and live here and stay here and grow and i have a passion for this and and a commitment that i can be the voice for the issues that our municipalities are facing right now and i think that good leadership it's required to achieve success and for amm to achieve success you need a good leader and i would be a good leader for this association and for municipalities Kathy, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to sit down with me. Uh, I feel like we've just barely scratched the surface, but I, I can imagine that in November when we uh, meet in Winnipeg, we'll continue this conversation a little bit more. Thank you so much. I hope you. Thank you and have a great weekend. Thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of Municipal Affairs. We really hope you've enjoyed today's conversation. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an upcoming episode. Now, our plan is to try to have as many of the candidates running for the AMM's executive committee on this show, from president candidates to vice president's candidates. So you will not want to miss them if you live and reside and are a councillor or elected official in the province of Manitoba. Your support helps us to continue to grow and bring you more important conversations like you heard today. So stay connected, stay informed, and we'll see you next time here on Municipal Affairs. Till then, everyone.